And I'm reading about Nicolas Sarkozy, and here they are at the G20 meeting, and the microphones are left on, and Sarkozy thinks he's alone with Obama right. and says he can't stand Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And there's Obama that says, you're fed up with him. Yeah. I have to deal with him every day. Yeah. Well, it was uh, it was very troubling to me. I mean, to me, it's insulting to Prime Minister Netanyahu, who is obviously an ally of both France and uh, the United States. Uh, Sarkozy's comments were the worst, to, to say that uh, Netanyahu is a liar. I mean, I've known Netanyahu for 30 years, and, uh, you know, you can agree with him or disagree with him. You can say he's... Uh, He's opinionated, too opinionated. Some people would say he's arrogant. But honestly, I've been with him through some very tense times, and, and his word has always been good. So I, where Sarkozy came up with that, you know, by, the, by what I understood of the overhearing of the conversation, in the preceding sentence, um, uh, President Obama said to Sarkozy, you know, you, you should have told me uh, that you were going to vote with the Palestinians at the UN on their admission to uh, UNESCO uh, before you voted. And so, in a funny way, um, uh, I think that the Obama had Sarkozy on the defensive, and he came back with an attack on Netanyahu. But it's totally unacceptable, totally offensive. And obviously, I was disappointed by President Obama's response, because I wish he had, in some measure, come to the defense of uh, of Bibi Netanyahu and and well, uh, but here's the pattern, and this is what I don't understand. Yeah. I, I, because this president has shown himself to be the least supportive president of Israel in history. Now we made a promise to Israel that we would never ask them to return to their 67 borders. So right. here the prime minister is on a flight coming to America, and he has to deal with that as soon as he hits the ground. The prior trip. The president storms out of a meeting with, with one of our closest allies, runs up to the, his personal residence in the White House. No way to treat any foreign leader, never, never mind a close ally. And I think these comments are very revealing. They remind me of Obama being out in San Francisco talking about, you know, those bitter people in Pennsylvania that cling to their Bibles, yeah. God, and guns, and religion. <laughs> So, look, the lesson is uh, don't, don't say anything, even if you think it's in private, if you don't want. Well, I'm actually to be glad I know. I want to know my, who my enemies are because I don't think he's a friend to Bibi Netanyahu, and I'm friends with him as well, like you are. I agree. So, look, it's obvious that they, not, notwithstanding everything that uh, has been tried, uh, these two leaders of, of great allies, U.S. and Israel, the people of both countries tied together <clears throat> very deeply by history, by, by faith, by values, uh, by common enemies today. Uh, unfortunately, the president and the prime minister uh, don't have that kind of relationship. I, I want to say, in accuracy and fairness, though, through all of this, the relationship between the military and intelligence uh, communities uh, of the U.S. and Israel uh, continue to be great. And in fact, in some ways, they've improved uh, during the Obama years. But 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 look, there's no substitute for a good, trusting relationship between the leaders of two uh, great allied countries. And uh, yeah, but. I